Hello, today I'm going to be answering the question, what is the best cooling configuration for Fantex P200A? So I'm going to be looking at mounting your GPU vertically versus horizontally, having your radiator at the front versus having your radiator at the side, does adding extra fans below the GPU make any difference, and should you use an air cooler versus an AIO? So if you're thinking of doing a build in this case, you're definitely going to want to check out this video before you do. So I'm going to be starting off with the configuration I used in my full step-by-step -step build guide and you'll find a link to that video in the description. So in that build I had the Ryzen 7 3700X being cooled by the Pure Loop 240mm AIO. I had the radiator on the side set to exhaust. I had two front intake fans and a single rear exhaust. All the fans used in the build were Lian Lee's Unifans 120mm, both as case fans and on the radiator. And for the graphics card I used NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti. Looking at the temperatures, and these were excellent, our CPU idled at 34 degrees, while under a 20 minute idle 64 stability test it reached a maximum of 81 degrees. GPU temperatures were equally impressive, with an idle temperature of 28 degrees, reaching a maximum of only 62 degrees under a 20 minute idle 64 stability test. Noise levels were less impressive, probably fitting into the moderate range at 37 decibels at idle and 52 decibels during the idle 64 stability test. Looking at how this compares to some of my other mini ITX builds, and while the graphics card and the cooling configurations used in each of these systems was different, it is important to say I did use the same CPU in each of these builds. Looking at temperatures, it's clear to see the P200A is the clear winner, with the CPU temperatures under the IDA64 stability test being 15 degrees lower than in the TU150 and 8 degrees lower than in the Sugo15. Importantly, we can't compare like by like GPU temperatures, but 62 degrees during the IDA64 stability test is incredibly low for this GPU. You can see noise levels were, however, less than impressive, with the P200A being 5 decibels louder than the Sugo15 at idle and 11 decibels louder under load. So moving on to look at the different configurations in the P200A, and the first question I wanted to answer was did adding extra fans below the GPU improve the GPU temperatures? Now space below the GPU is actually fairly limited, and if you were to use standard thickness fans, which are 25 millimeters thick, they would actually be pretty close to the GPU. I have tested this in other cases, and in this situation I've found the fans being so close to the GPU actually makes temperatures worse. And really your best option is to use slim fans, which are only 15mm thick. Having them a little bit further away from the GPU, in general they will improve temperatures, but will come at a cost of noise. So what I did, I added two obnoxious 15mm thick fans below the GPU, keeping everything else the same with our original configuration. So looking at the temperatures with the two fans below the GPU, our CPU idled one degree hotter while there was no difference to the GPU idle temperatures. During the 20 minute idle 64 stability test with the two fans below the GPU, our CPU temperatures were again one degree hotter while our GPU temperatures were two degrees cooler. Looking at the noise levels with the two additional fans below the GPU, our idle noise levels were one decibel louder while under the IDA64 stability test the noise levels were 4 decibels louder. So these results make perfect sense to me, adding additional fans below the GPU, provided they're far enough away from the GPU, they will improve the temperatures. The downside of that is in twofold, one, the additional hot air coming from the GPU is blowing up and into our radiator, which increases our CPU temperatures. The other big downside is noise. And the problem with the slim fans is they tend to be noisier than the standard thickness fans. So I think when you weigh everything up, your CPU temperatures are going to go up. You're going to have significantly more noise in your build. You're going to have to pay extra money for the fans, which aren't cheap. So weighing everything up, I wouldn't recommend adding extra fans below your GPU. The GPU temperatures are already good, and there's no reason to do this. The next question I want to answer is should you mount your GPU vertically or horizontally? It is important to point out one of the downsides to mounting it vertically, and that is that you're going to lose the rear exhaust fan mounting location at the back of the case. So taking a look at the results, with our GPU mounted vertically, our CPU idled 2 degrees hotter, while under load it was 3 degrees hotter. GPU temperatures were also worse by 1 degree at idle, when there was no difference under load. There was no difference to the idle noise levels, however, with the GPU mounted vertically, it was one decibel quieter under load. 
So the results here in terms of temperatures are very clear. You're much better mounting your graphics card horizontally. That as well is going to save you some money because although the case comes with a bracket to mount your GPU vertically, it doesn't come with a riser cable. So you're going to have to purchase that at an extra cost. It is important to point out that the optional riser cable is Gen 3. And I think we're all aware of the issues of using these Gen 3 cables with the current generation of Gen 4 motherboards and graphics cards. And you can save yourself a whole lot of headache by just mounting your graphics card in the horizontal orientation. There is no denying, however, that the vertical graphics card does look great in this case, and some of you may well decide that it's worth the extra cost and extra headache to do that. So the next thing I wanted to look at was, say you did want to go and mount your graphics card vertically, there is space over to the right of it for an additional intake fan. So does adding that additional intake fan make any difference? So taking a look at the temperatures, the additional intake fan below the vertical GPU didn't make any difference to the idle temperatures, while under the IDA64 stability test, both the CPU and GPU temperatures came down by one degree. Looking at the noise levels, there was no additional noise levels at idle, while the additional fan below the GPU increased the noise levels under the IDA64 stability test by two decibels. So analyzing the results, for me, the very slight improvement in the load temperatures is cancelled out by the increase in the noise levels. You also have to factor in you're going to have to pay the money for an extra fan, and aesthetically for me, it just didn't look good having a single fan below the GPU. I'm a big believer in symmetry in the PC builds, and I think this made it look significantly worse. So for me, I would stay away from this. The next thing I want to look at was the effect of moving the radiator to the front of the case and having it set to intake. But this also brought up the question of what we should do at the side of the case. And we've got three options. We can have fans set to intake, we can have fans set to exhaust, or we can have no fans at all. So the first configuration I looked at was having the fans on the side set to exhaust. And you can see the results there on the screen. So the next thing I did was I flipped the fans round and had them set to intake. As you can see from the results, this wasn't a good idea. Our CPU idled three degrees hotter while it was one degree hotter under load. Our GPU was two degrees hotter both at idle and under load, and our noise levels under load were one decibel louder. The next configuration I looked at was having no fans on the side. Compared to having our fans on the side set to exhaust, our CPU idled one degree hotter while there was no difference to the CPU temperatures under load. GPU temperatures were significantly worse with this by two degrees at idle and three degrees under load. This configuration was, however, the quietest by one decibel under load. So the results here are fairly clear. If you're going to have a front mounted radiator, you're going to want to have side exhaust fans. This is good because this is going to give you the best aesthetic look because the fans on the side are going to be facing the right way around, showing off their good side. So the next question to answer is should you put your radiator at the front or on the side? In most cases having your radiator at the front as an intake is going to give you the best CPU temperatures. The reason for that is that the cooler from outside the case is going to be going through the radiator and that is going to give you the best cooling potential rather than having your radiator inside the case set to exhaust where it's the hot air from inside the case that is going through the radiator. In most cases the downside to that is your GPU temperatures and all the other components inside the case tend to be worse with a front mounted intake radiator. And again the reason for that is you're going to be dumping hot air into the case which is going to heat up your other components. Having your radiator as an exhaust all that hot air is going to go straight out. Now this case is a little bit different. Having your radiator as an exhaust on the side, it's still getting a heap of fresh air coming in from those front intake fans. And for me, it's probably as good as having it at the front as an intake. But you do get a big advantage. All the hot air coming out the other side of the radiator is going out of the case rather than going in where it's going to heat up all the other components. So if I was going to bet on a configuration, I would say the original configuration with the radiator at the side is probably going to give you the best overall temperatures. So let's see if I was right. So our CPU temperatures were a little bit mixed. Having the radiator as a front intake, our CPU idled one degree hotter while it was one degree cooler under load. As you'd expect with the front intake, our GPU temperatures were worse by one degree at idle and two degrees under load. The side exhaust was the lighter configuration at idle by 3 decibels, while there was no difference between the configurations and noise levels under load. So analysing the results in terms of temperatures, definitely the side exhaust seems to be the way to go. However, that's also the lighter configuration at idle. And again, that's not a surprise. In all the builds that I've done, I've found in general you save yourself a couple of decibels by having your radiator as an intake 
compared to an exhaust. So you're just going to have to weigh that one up yourself and decide what's more important in terms of noise on temperatures and when you're going to decide where to put your radiator. Now one of the things I haven't tested, and this may well influence your decision, is that you can put a 280mm radiator at the front, whereas you're limited to a 240mm radiator at the side. And I would imagine having a 280 at the front is going to give you better temperatures than a 240 at the side, even if you were to increase the front intake fans up to 140mm in size. I think if you're going with a 240mm radiator, probably weighing all that up, I would put it on the side as an exhaust. The next question I want to answer is should you use an air cooler or an AIO? So I added Cooler Masters MA612 air cooler. I had two fans in the front, two fans in the side, both set to intake. Unfortunately with the air cooler there was no way to fit a rear exhaust fan. So looking at the temperatures, our CPU was 2 degrees hotter at idle and 3 degrees hotter under load with the air cooler. While our graphics card was 1 degree hotter at idle with the air cooler and there was no difference to the load temperatures. Idle noise levels were however better with the air cooler by 3 decibels and there was no difference to the load noise levels. So summarising these results, the air cooler was definitely better in terms of noise levels, the IO was better in terms of cooling, so I think I would go with which you think looks better. For me I thought the IO looked much better, so I would definitely go with it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a summary slide of all the configurations I've tested up on the screen, so you want to have a closer look at these, go ahead and pause your video now. So now it's time to put everything together and give you my recommendations for building in this case. And my recommendation would be to use my original configuration, which was the radiator on the side set to exhaust, two fans at the front set to intake, and a single rear exhaust with the graphics card in the horizontal orientation. In this configuration, you're going to get some exceptional temperatures, although the noise levels with the stock fan curves will be a little above what I would regard as acceptable. That's easy enough to fix. You just need to sacrifice your temperature a little bit, bring your fan curves down, and get much more acceptable noise levels. I think you're going to reach a, a middle ground where you've got good temperatures and good noise levels and a great looking build. So I've been very impressed with the P200A and I definitely can recommend it. So if you haven't seen my full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please go ahead and check that out. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.